And all God's people said, Amen. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Shane. I'm the pastor here, and we are so glad that you are joining us for worship. This, the third week of our sermon series, the gift, the, <coughs> excuse me, talking about the gift of music and the gift that God has given us to have music played around us so we can hear it and know it. And we heard a great music piece from our bell choir. Our choir will be singing later and our bell choir will be playing again. And we will continue to worship the Lord our God through the gift of music. We want to welcome those of you joining us online. We are so glad you are here with us this morning. And we want to draw your attention to two things. On the YouTube page, under the descriptions, you can find a copy of our bulletin. You can there follow along through our worship service. But also, there's a link for our, our connection, our communication card. We encourage you to fill that out, to share with us that you joined us in worship, as it is always helpful to know who is with us and from where. And for those of you here in person, we have our yellow communication card in your bulletin. And we encourage you to fill that out. Share with us your name, who's with you, if you have any new information. And on the back, you can share <clears throat> if you'd like to subscribe to any of our communication methods. But also, if you have a prayer request, you can put that on there as well. And as you know, those prayer requests I keep with me in my office. And we pray over these requests, I pray over these requests every day. As we continue with worship, I invite you to join with me in our gathering words. We gather to worship. We gather to worship. We gather to worship. We gather to worship. Our scripture lesson this morning is Psalm 98. Hear these words. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth, break forth in a joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and with the peoples with equity. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I invite you to rise in spirit or body and join us as we sing, When in our music, God is glorified.
may be seated. Will the children please come forward? How are you doing? So, do you guys know what we're talking about today? Music. We've been talking about music for a while. Do you guys like music? Yeah? So, our scripture today has a very important, two really important words, or little phrases. It starts telling us to sing a new song. And later it says, make joyful noise. Do you guys like to make noise? Yeah. Yeah? Little, little quiet noise? Yeah. Big noise. Big noise. Do we make noise just to make noise? Yeah. Or is it helpful to make noise for a reason? Yeah? Not help? To cheer up? Who do we make joyful noise to in the church? God. God. So, I have a question. Do you guys want to make a joyful noise right now? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Okay. Look what I have. I have some instruments. Now, if I can remember how to get these instruments out. There we go. So, hold on. Back up. Well, they could be, but they could also, you can just tap against them. Yeah, let's see what else we have. You know what this is? A tambourine, you can shake it. You know what these are? More maracas. But they sound differently, don't they? They sound different? You know what these are? Flute type things, yeah. So. And then, do you know what this is? A drum. So, okay, we, we made a joyful noise, right? We didn't? Should we make a joyful noise together? What instrument do you want? These? Okay. What do you want? A flute? What do you want? What do you want? The big drum? Okay. And I'll take the tambourine. Okay. Are you guys ready? Okay. One, when I count to four, we'll sing together. One, two, three, four. Make noise. Okay, and stop. It was fun to make noise. But remember, we could also make noise to God, to Jesus. And we can thank Jesus for... I like to make noise to God. Do you? We can thank God for the things God's given us. Do you know we can even pray when we make noise? So, okay, we're going to try some. We're going to make some noise again. But we're not going to make a loud noise. We're going to make quiet noise. Okay, try. Try. And stop. Okay. So we're going to do that again. And as we do that, I'm going to lead us in prayer, okay? You don't have to repeat after me today because you're going to, you're focusing on your instruments, right? Okay. We're going to be quiet prayer, okay? Ready? Go. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of music that we can hear your words in new ways and make a joyful noise. Amen. Now, really quick, I want you to make a joyful noise. Okay. I want, I want you to remember that wherever you are, you can make a joyful noise to God. Can you remember that? Okay. You can go, you're funny. Hey, you can sit back down.
their kid coming up to them and telling them, Mom or Dad, I heard this amazing new song. You're never going to believe it. It's amazing. I had that. I did that to my mom once. I would say it's like 1998, 99. I told her about this really cool band called the Dixie Chicks, and they had this new song called Landslide. <laughs> and my mom had to tell me, oh, son, that's not their song. That song was done by Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks a long time ago. <laughs> There's always new songs or songs sung in new ways or new ways to do things. Music is evolving. Music is changing all around us. Always, we can hear songs in new ways. We can hear songs in new meanings and new melodies and it changes for us. Now, I don't know if this will surprise some of you or not, but do you want to take a guess what causes more church discussion, I'll call it, in worship than anything else? The music. Sometimes, I bet you a pastor could stand up and say some of the most blasphemous things in the world, but as long as the music's what they want, they'll be okay. You know, we call that, in some circles, they call it the worship wars of the late 90s and early 2000s of, of what type of music do we get? Do we get the contemporary? And now I always laugh when someone says, can we send the, sing the old traditional music? And I always want to say, oh, you mean like the chants of the 1500s? <laughs> what I realize is what most people mean is the music they grew up with, the music they know and love. Because... Learning a new song isn't easy, right? I mean, we can ask the choir. You guys do it every week. It's not always easy. But did you guys notice how today's psalm started out? The psalm starts out reminding the people to sing a new song. To remind them to sing a new song. And before the text starts listing all the amazing things God's done in life, it tells them to sing a new song. Now, new things can be scary. New things can be exciting. Or sometimes they can even be both at the same time. We all experience new things in our life. And so I think that's one reason people want to hear certain music in church, because it's comforting. It, it gives them a sense of grounding when the world is changing all around them. But we need to remember that the psalm requires us to sing a new song. When Meg and I were in seminary, on Thursday nights after our last class, a group of us would go down to the 18th and Vine District of Kansas City, Missouri. This is the jazz district. This is where Charlie Parker got his start. Some of the great jazz musicians. And we would go to this little jazz place called the Blue Note. And there we would listen to the jazz play. Now, if you know anything about jazz, jazz is not about just playing the same thing over and over again or playing exactly what's on the plate, on the page. Jazz is about listening for a new song. A jazz musician can start playing and then something wells up inside them and then they start going off on their own thing. Maybe the trumpet does it, and then the piano goes, ooh, okay, I'll follow along, then I'll do this. And then the drums does it. And all of a sudden, this song that they started one way that, that they all knew morphs in to a new song and to something new, unheard of. The psalmist reminds us that a new song is needed, even though we may start in one way, because God is doing something new. A new song is needed because God is leading us and guiding us in ways God had never done before. God is speaking to us. God is doing new things in our lives. And thus, we need to be ready with a new song. Because sometimes the songs of the past just don't fill the moment right. Sometimes the songs we know just don't hit the spot where we want, and so we have to be willing to be creative and courageous and step out into a new song 
singing to God. The psalmist is inviting the people not just to sing a new song, but to sing a song infused with new perceptions of life, with new understandings of where God is leading them, and with a new sense of purpose. As I was doing some research about this, I ran in to an interesting um, article that talked about how in Italian, there's a really interesting word that they use when something new is needed. It's called aggiornamento, and it means bringing up to date. That's what the word translates. But many people in history, and I'm going to say, Jerry, do you know this word? I've heard it before. And I'll tell you why Jerry knows it. Because it was made famous, I mean, it's a word, but it was used by Pope John the Twenty-Third when he called for the Second Vatican Council. He said, it is time to bring the church up to date. Al giornamento. To sing a new song. To fit the period where God has led us and guide us and where we are today. It is time to let, the, let God infuse our lives, and that was in the 1960s, and lead us and guide us into new songs and new ways of doing things. How do we update that which we have been doing and sing a new song? When I was in a previous church, one day I was told that I wasn't choosing all the right hymns for worship. And, Elmer, isn't that one of the most difficult things? Because that's, or isn't that what people comment the most about is the hymns you chose sometimes? Oh, okay. No, <laughs> Elmer never got it. I did. Now, I'll tell you, my predecessor at Clarkston was really smart. I mean, like, four predecessors before me. They kept a copy of the hymnal in the office, and every time they sang a song, they would date it. So if someone said, we've never sung that song, I could open the hymnal and say, well, nope, we sang it on these ten dates. But I remember once when they said, we want to sing the songs that we grew up with, the songs that every Methodist knows out of the hymnal. So that night, as I did every Saturday night while he was alive, I called my grandfather. And I said, Grandpa, I want you to do me a favor. He goes, okay, well, I go, pull out your hymnal, because he had a hymnal, because he's a good Methodist. And he pulls out his hymnal, I go, okay, <clears throat> this week, Grandpa, I want you to go through it and write down the ten songs you know. Like, as you look through that hymnal, oh, yeah, I, I love this song, I know this song, and pull out ten songs for me. And then next week, I want you to share that list with me. He says, okay, I'll do that. So he did that the next week, and then over the next four weeks, I programmed all ten of those songs. Do you know what the church told me? We asked you to choose the songs every Methodist would know that we grew up with. Why do you choose these songs? And I talked to them about how sometimes what we want is just, it fits us. Well, this is the song I grew up with. This is the song I know. But sometimes we have to be willing to explore out into the unknown. Sometimes we have to be willing to sing a new song. Now, I told you, well, let me step back a second. And, one, and some of the songs that people grew up with in the church, I'm going to list a few, see if you guys know these. I sing the mighty power of God. You guys know that? Okay. When I survey the wondrous cross. Know that one? Joy to the world. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to, yeah. what do all three of those songs have in common, Jerry? Same text the same text writer. Isaac Watts, who is considered one of the greatest hymn writers of all times, second to Charles Wesley. And Isaac Watts himself would agree with that. I found that, in, like, he, he loved the Wesley's text. But do you want to know why Isaac Watts wrote these songs and many, many, many others? Because he was frustrated with what he called the heartless psalm singing of the church. And often, when he would get home from worship, he would sit around the table criticizing the singing that he heard. It was lifeless. It had no energy to it. It was the same thing over and over again. And one day, after hearing enough, his father looks at him and says, Well then, young man, 
why don't you give us something better to sing? And so Isaac Watts began to write hymns. Now here's my question. Do you think when he started writing these hymns, everyone in the church was super excited like you guys are about these hymns? Like, oh, wow, these are amazing, Isaac. We can't wait to sing them to every worship service. No. Isaac Watts was caught up in the worship wars. Some criticized his hymns as being too worldly. I actually read an account of a Presbyterian who came from Alabama. He stood up on the floor at the Presbyterian National Convention and goes, I have ridden my horse with no brakes to get here to Philadelphia to demand that we do not allow the music of Isaac Watts in our churches. I wonder if these people were afraid of a new song. They were afraid of where the music may lead them and guide them. Isaac wasn't. Now, I'm not saying every church didn't like his music. Many churches did. But many churches did not. But he knew a new song was needed. He knew the people needed a new song. A new way to express their understanding of God. A new way to hear things. A new way to live into the future. I don't know for sure, but I wonder, as Isaac wrote, he thought of Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord. Share in new ways what God is doing in your life through the gift of music. Sing a new song. Vatican II, Algernamento, the updating of the church. Not just updating the liturgy and uh, stopped requiring the Latin Mass, but really, it updated the music. Many of the hymn texts many of you love and know, I would argue, would not be around without Vatican II and the Catholic Church. And I think I can make this argument. We'll see if Jerry gives me. Here I am, Lord. Dan Schulte, right? Shoot. Catholic writer. Probably would not have written that song without Vatican II. And I think I shared this last week. Here I Am, Lord, is considered one of the number one, depending what year survey, the number one or number two favorite song of Methodists to sing in worship. And it's not even that old. It's, I mean, it's younger than I am. It was written in 1989. All of this new music, because people were willing to sing a new song and be open to. Now, this is not a sermon for me to prepare to you to say, okay, we're going to sing all new songs you've never heard of every week from now on. No, there are still need to hear the old music. But sometimes we can hear it in new ways. One of my favorite stories my mother told me. My mom was in junior high, and she was going through confirmation at our small United Methodist Church in Halstead, Kansas. And one day... They were talking, I don't know exactly how it came up, but the youth leader said, you guys know the Coca-Cola theme song? And all the kids were like, oh yeah, we know that. Anyone here know it? I'd like, I can remember how it goes. Da, 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 da. There you go. I can't remember the words, but, and all of a sudden, all the kids knew it, and he goes, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want you to hum the tune, he told all the kids, and I'm going to sing it. And the kids looked at him like, okay. And then he started, I'm not, since Jerry's got it, Jerry, I'm going to sing, I want Jerry to just play it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. You guys see what he did? He took a song, a words they knew, but put it to a new, a new melody. And my mom says to this day, she cannot forget that experience. A new song. So here's my question. What new song is God calling you to sing? What new, maybe words you know, but to a new tune? What new words is God calling to put on your heart? And how do you listen? How do we encourage one another? And how do we welcome the new songs God is leading us to? 
Because every hymn writer that you love, that you would say, oh, I grew up on this hymn, it's the greatest hymn ever, I want it at my funeral, or I had it at my wedding, or whatever, that was a new song at some point. And trust me, there are new songs waiting to be written, and maybe by one of you. Amen. Our bell choir gets, I'm just going to let you guys know. Jerry didn't know I was going to do that. So that's pretty awesome that Jerry can just pick that up. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We take time now to lift up our prayers for one another so that we can be praying for one another throughout the week and to lift up our prayers for God so, so that we can verbalize our prayers to God.
for those of you online and also those of you here, if you have a prayer during the week, something that you would like to lift up in prayer, you can email us at the church, prayerchain at wesleyofyakima.org, and we will share your prayer on our online prayer chain. In just a moment, we will pass around some microphones, and if you have a prayer you'd like to lift up, I encourage you to raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone to you to share your name and to share with us your prayer. If it's a prayer of joy after you share, we encourage you to say thanks be to God and together respond alleluia. Or if it's a prayer of concern after you share, we encourage you to say, Lord, in your mercy, and we will respond to hear our prayer. Hi, I'm Sandy Teagarden, and um, we, have, we have a long story for our family. We have six kids, and we fostered and adopted all of them. And our oldest son, who um, was physically abused his first five weeks, um, just got his first job, and he's 16. He'll be working at Safeway on 24th. He's really proud and excited. Thank you. Uh, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Good morning, uh, Jim and Nita Winkenwood are here. We have two prayer requests. First of all, uh, Nita's daughter, Eileen Rowland, fell and broke her wrist, shattered it badly, and the surgery is coming up within a few days, but this is a painful and distressing time for her and the family. So we ask for prayers, and Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And the second request is a uh, prayer for sister-in-law, Sharon, Higby, who is recovering from cancer surgery, and we pray for her complete recovery, and we ask this again in the uh, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you who are on the prayer chain, you know that um, um, we've been praying for the niece um, of um, Bruce Motter and uh, Bob Morris. And um, she went on hospice care earlier this week. I got a call from uh, Bob this morning that she passed yesterday. Um, he is asking for prayers for, for the family of Lisa, particularly her two sons, um, uh, Russell and Colby, and uh, they're 14 and 10. and. Um, he has particular prayers for them as they go through the rest of this life without their mother. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. This is Sarah, and I actually have two prayers. Uh, my aunt, uh, Cheryl is her name. She is on hospice, so um, prayers for a peaceful journey. Um, so, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And the second one, um, I'm a teacher, and I am taking 20 students and adults to D.C. and New York, and we leave Tuesday. And so uh, prayers for a good journey for us as well, and there are, hopefully there's no hiccups. Yeah, so um, that's kind of a joy and a concern. So, <laughs> um, let's see, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I would lift up all of those in our country who um, this weekend are worried and scared for the future of their reproductive rights, whatever that may be for them. Um, as we have a, dis a serious discussion in this country, what does it mean to provide rights to all? And what does that look like? Wherever we fall on, a sit on, the, sit on the idea of reproductive rights and whatever, because it is a wide spectrum, but that we can be civil and do what we, where God is calling us to care so that all may experience not just life at birth, but life abundantly throughout their life. And so um, I'll just share, I know uh, two people specifically in my life who are worried um, for their own situations as they have to make some reproductive health choices. And so uh, prayers for all of those in our country at this time. Lord, in your mercy. 
There are always so many other prayers we could lift up. But the beauty is God hears already. As soon as the prayer enters our hearts or our minds, before it is even on our lips, the Lord our God knows. And so take heart that, as Paul says in the book of Romans, that the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. And when we don't have the words, but we know words are needed, let us remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Throughout this series, I've asked someone from the community of faith here to choose our last hymn that we sing, but not just choose it, but to tell us what it tells them, what it speaks to them about God. What does this song tell them about their faith and their journey with God? And so this week, I invited Kay Allen to share. So I'm going to invite her to come forward, and then we'll need a mic. Um, I'll tell you, when I called Kay this week, she goes, oh yeah, that's easy. Well, no, that's really hard because I have to choose only one hymn. Because Kay told me she could have chose 100 hymns today. But I'm going to invite Kay to share with us uh, the hymn she, the song she chose and why. Well, um, I chose Shine, Jesus, Shine. And then after I chose it, I thought, you know, probably everybody in this, this uh, congregation knows that song. It's kind of a new one to me. I think Jerry... Is this working? Yeah. Okay. It, Jerry introduced it to me during uh, the COVID thing, and I think I sang it for the online church. But um, I just, I chose it because I like the song. I like to sing it. I like the, the fact that it has a slow and a fast part, and um, I, I like that it... The, the meaning of the, the words in the verses are very, very succinct and right on, on, on t target. Um, it speaks of um, uh, scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. So it's, it's got everything, I okay. guess. <laughs> uh, as far as what it oh. does for me, I guess it's just a, it's a, it's a challenge, and I think without God on my side, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be challenged. So, yeah. Well, let's join together in spirit or body and sing a new song to some of us, a new song to Kay over the last few years, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're always learning new songs. A new song becomes, it becomes, <coughs> uh, uh, excuse me, at one point a new song is no longer new because we know it and it wells up from inside of us. But we give thanks for the new songs that we learn. Here at Wesley, we're always learning new songs, not just through music, but new ways to praise and make a joyful noise to God as we always are striving to serve Christ, to serve community, and serve creation. You can look at your calendar on, our, um, at the, on the inside of your bulletin for a few things coming up. Um, on Tuesday, we have our meal for Camp Hope and Noah's Ark. Um, we don't need any help in the kitchen, as this is normally our June meal is Portia Jones organizes, and it's prepared by the medical residents at Central Washington Family Medicine. I've got to Oh yeah, Central Washington Family Medicine. And so their residents will be here on Tuesday. But if I remember right, uh, there we go. Susie, what did we say we needed? Eight dozen rolls. We need eight dozen rolls. So if you are able to get some rolls, that would be helpful. And so, um, but everything else is ready. And so we are excited to do that meal. Um, I'm going to... There is no choir practice Wednesday, right? Yeah, no choir practice. So choir, this is our last Sunday with the choir and the bell choir. Um, yes, I know. But, uh, <clears throat> and then you can see the other things on the calendar. Prepping ahead for next week will be closed for the 4th of July. And then my family and I will be taking vacation. We're going to leave after church next Sunday on the 3rd and be back the 12th. Um, come back to town the 12th as we'll be taking a family vacation together this summer. But there's always so many things going on here at Wesley, from our recycling center, our little free food pantry, our meals. Another new project, it was in your Wesley Weekly online this week, but in July, and I think in August too, but I know in July, we're going to start taking pictures for a new church directory. We're going to be doing it in-house, so Sarah Crum, our media specialist, is organizing that. And online, or in the weekly, she has a Sign Up Genius link. To sign up for slots. So if you would like to come and get, we're going to set up one of our classrooms as a little photo studio with a backdrop and everything, you can, we'd love for having you to sign up. If you're not able to use Sign Up Genius, you can get a hold of the church office and we can help you with that. Or Sarah will be back here next week. She's on vacation this weekend and she can help you uh, get a slot as well. I think there's six or seven different dates and times, but you'd have to check the Sign Up Genius. And we're doing that in preparation for October when we have our big 150th celebration date. And so we're excited as that's coming forward, a new directory. Uh, Paul Schaefer is working on a booklet of the history of Methodism in Yakima for 150 years. And uh, Linda Layfield, Diane Rockstrom, and uh, there he is, Dennis Hoff have been, I knew he was here somewhere, um, have been working on our display case. And I know they're going to be changing that out in the next week. So if you haven't seen June's display case, go look at it. And then they'll put something up new for next month to showcase the history of Methodism here in Yakima for the last 150 years. Oh. And Lowell Kennedy is working on doing pictures for us. Yeah, Lowell will be doing our pictures with Sarah and helping on that as well for our uh, um, directory. But there is so much going on here at Wesley. And as we continue to move into this next year, as changes are happening around us, we know that God is continuing to call us to a new song. And to make that new song possible, it takes each and every one of us to share our gifts. Maybe you have the gift of music. Not singing, maybe playing. I can't do both. If you, didn't notice, if you notice, I can either sing or clap. I can't do them both at the same time. But I love to make a new song when I can. But we make new songs as our recycling center expands, as we continue to look for new missions and projects here at Wesley. And all of that is possible because each and every one of you is sharing your gifts. We have three ways to share our financial gifts here at Wesley so we can continue to bring new songs to our people. One is you can always mail a check or do maybe online bill pay and have your bank mail a check to us. 
The address is in your bulletin. It's also on the screen. You can go to our website, wesleyofyakima.org. And there, we have an online giving portal. There's a Give button at top or a Give button at the bottom. And you can click in and learn about all the different ways to support us. But also, you can do an online giving through a credit card or a bank account. And as always, we have our offering box in the back. And you can share your gifts in there on Sunday. But we thank each and every one of you for the gifts that you share with us. So we can continue to make a new song together as the people of Wesley United Methodist Church. As you prepare to go into your week, I want you to listen for the new songs God's putting on your heart. Maybe you're listening to the radio one day and a song just pops in your, on the radio and you start singing it to yourself and realize, what does that song tell you about God? Because God speaks through all music. Maybe a song pops into your mind, and so you go to your computer and you pull it up on YouTube or Spotify or whatever your mu mu music service is, just because you need to hear that song again. I did that this week as I was driving to annual conference. I just, as I needed something, I, I pulled up my Amazon music playlist and I listened to Lauren Daigle, because I knew I needed to hear a new song. Whatever it may be, may you listen, not just with your ears, but your heart and your soul, as God puts a new song in each and every one of our lives. And now hear these words. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine down upon you, and may God's grace always be with you. And to those to whom love is a stranger, may they encounter in you a generous friend. Amen and amen.